So, uh, on last class, uh, we studied about the this one uh, different source of uh, this uh, ammonia. So, this urea it's a excretory product of the nitrogen content that is present in the uh, protein uh, these amino acids. So, in amino acids, so generally it contains uh, amino groups and the carboskeletal groups. And these carboskeletal groups of these amino acids, they are utilized uh, for the energy sources, or that is also utilized for the precursors of uh, this uh, precursor for the synthesis of the glucose or uh, lipid. And these amino groups, so that is uh, that is converted to urea, and in the form of the urea, it is excreted. So during the uh, this one uh, degradations of amino acids, uh, so for the releasing of amino groups from, from the uh, different amino acids, so there are basically three types, uh, these two types of reactions. So one is the transaminations reaction, and next one is the deamination reactions. So during the uh, most of the amino acids, so they remove their amino groups by the transaminations, and this is transaminations is that transamination is the process from which the transfer of amino group from the amino acid to the uh, another oxo acids so that there is the formation of the new amino acids and respective oxo acid and most of these transamination reactions alpha keto direct so that is the common acceptors for the amino groups from the different amino acids so that so during the transamination transamination reactions it is a glutamate is the common amino acid formed and that is the one of the reason that the glutamate and glutamine so that is found in the higher concentrations in a plasma we compare these amino acid concentrations of amino acids in these uh, different amino acids in a plasma or serum so after uh, this transamination, this glutamate, uh, this uh, in the form of glutamate or glutamine, so it is transported to the liver where the urea cycle takes place. And in uh, in in liver, this uh, this glutamate dehydrogenase, so th that is the oxidative deaminase enzyme, enzyme, so which converts glutamate to the free ammonia and then alpha keto glutarate, and this free ammonia, so it is intro to the urea cycle for the synthesis of urea and uh, this so urea cycle it is most it is occurred in a liver so now uh, we'll continue at this so this urea cycle it's a cyclic pathway in which ammonia is converted to urea and it's a first metabolic pathway to be elucidated and it is also called as a Krebs sense the urea cycle since uh, this is first demonstrated by the Krebs Henslet and it is also called as the ornithine cycle since the first member of the urea cycle is the ornithine and this urea is the major disposal form of amino nitrogen derived from the amino acids so this is just a general overview of the urea cycle so under urea cycle first this ammonia uh, reacts with the bicarbonate to form a carbamyl phosphate and this carbamyl phosphate it's react with the ornithine to form a citrulline and this citrulline with the help of the enzyme arginosuccinate synthase it's form a arginosuccinate and with the help of the another enzyme arginosuccinate lyase this arginosuccinate is converted to arginine and finally this uh, with the help of the enzyme arginase this arginine is converted to the urea and ornithine so the first intermediate this ornithine which is used during the urea cycle is on the at the end it is regenerated and so is the cycle complete and so this uh, entire cycle this entire metabolism is called as the urea cycle so now uh, we'll detail we'll going under discuss in the detail so tissue and cellular low presence so then so basically this uh, urea is synthesized exclusively in the liver and uh, rest of the parts this urea cannot be synthesized since that arginase enzyme so it is responsible for the conversion of arginine to ornithine and urea so this arginase enzyme is only present in the liver and next thing that uh, this urea is senses in the liver is because that 
uh, the active enzymes like transaminase enzymes so which is responsible for a transfer of amino group from the uh, amino acids to the alpha ketoglutarate so that is also active in uh, this uh, liver and next thing is that glutamate dehydrogenase so which is responsible for the conversions of glutamate to the alpha ketoglutarate and this enzyme is also most active in the liver and this may be the reason so this uh, urea cycle is only synthesized in liver so uh, other types of uh, these other enzymes which is involved in the urea cycle they may be present in the other sites also but this arginase enzyme is exclusively present in a liver so cellular localization so among these uh, five enzymes which is involved in the synthesis which is involved in the urea cycle among them these two enzymes carbamyl phosphate synthetase and orditin transcarbamylase so it is presence in mitochondria so the first two steps of this urea cycle that that takes place in the mitochondria and the remaining three steps they are they, that takes place in the cytosol so this uh, first two steps that takes place in the mitochondria maybe that uh, that may be due to the uh, this glutamate dehydrogenase which is the which enzyme is responsible for the production of this ammonia from the glutamate so it is present in the mitochondria so among what is five enzymes of urea cycle two are present in mitochondria and three are present in the cytosol so first step so before that so here the precursors which is necessary for the urea cycle so ammonia so generally it is it can be get from a deamination of the amino acid glutam uh, this, uh, glutamate so this uh, with the help uh, this glutamate with the help of the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase it is converted to the alpha ketoglutarate and ammonia so the amino acids uh, from the different this uh, amino acid metabolism takes place in the different uh, tissues but uh, the amin this ammonia which is generated in the different tissues they are transported to the liver and uh, since ammonia is a toxic so this ammonia is transported to the liver in the form of the amino acid so in the most of the uh, most of the tissues it is it is transported to the liver in the form of the glutamate and glutamine so from uh, this brain and and uh, from uh, muscle uh, it is transported to the liver in the form of the alanine and the glutamine and this uh, the alanine which is from the uh, this muscle it is enters to the liver and uh, the glutamine which is produced in a muscle during a protein catabolism so that is directly transported to the kidney and where this glutamine is degraded with the enzymes uh, glutaminase presence in the kidney and that ammonia it is involved in the acid base balance and glutam glutamate which is present in the kidney and which is converted after the glutaminase activity in the kidney that glutamate it undergoes to the uh, this gluconeogenesis in the kidney and alanine so that from alanine what happened uh, due to the uh, by via the transamination reactions it transfers this amino group to the alpha ketoglutarate to form a glutamate in a liver and the source for uh, this uh, car carbon dioxide so it can be gained from a hmp shunt or it can be gained from the decarboxylation of the amino acids or it can be gained from the tca cycle it is also present in a surplus in the form of the bicarbonate and which for the sense liver aspartic acid and this aspartic acid from the uh, aspartate it can be directly uh, transferred from the brain to the liver in a small by accepting amino group from the glutamate to form an aspartate so now i will move on to the steps of uh, urea formation so first reactions that is the formation of the carbamyl phosphate and during the formation of the carbamyl phosphate that one molecule of ammonia that condenses with the one molecule of carbon dioxide in presence of the two molecule of atp to form carbamyl phosphate and here the among these two molecules of atp one molecule is utilized for the activation of this uh, carbon dioxide and next next atp molecule is used for the phosphorylation of car carbamate and so one is this one atp is used for the activations of 
there's carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide so bicarbonate and the another ATP molecule is used for the first violations of carbamate and to form a carbamate phosphate and uh, the reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthase one cps1 and this this carbamyl phosphate synthase one so it is a mitochondrial enzyme and it is involved in the urea cycle and in our in uh, in body that means another enzymes carbamyl phosphate synthase 2 is also present this carbamyl phosphate synthase 2 so it is present in the cytosol and it is involved in the synthesis of pyrimidine okay, so so there are two types of caramel phosphate synthetase. So caramel phosphate synthetase one and caramel phosphate synthetase two. Caramel phosphate synthetase one it is involved in the urea cycle and caramel phosphate synthetase two it is involved in the synthesis of uh, pyrimidine. And this caramel phosphate synthetase one is the mitochondrial enzyme and this caramel phosphate synthetase two is the cytosolic enzyme. And here this caramel phosphate synthetase one so which is involved in the urea cycle it is the rate limiting step. So rate limiting step means that is it's the it's the enzyme which regulated the synthesis of the urea and uh, the step the reactions which is catalyzed by this caramel phosphate synthesis one so it catalyzes the conversions of this uh, uh, carbon dioxide and ammonia to the caramel phosphate and it's the it is irreversible reactions and it is allosterically regulated and this enzyme is allosterically activated by the compound called as a N-acetyl glutamate. So N-A-G, N-acetyl glutamate. It's a allosteric, allosteric activator of carbamyl phosphate synthase 1. And this N-acetyl glutamate. So it is, it is synthesized from a glutamate. So when the concentrations of glutamate is higher in a tissue, it forwarded the reactions by one that by, con, by the actions of glutamate dehydrogenase it produces the ammonia which is the precursors required uh, for the urea synthesis and next this glutamate is also involved in the uh, synthesis of N-acetyl glutamate which is the allosteric activator of the carbamyl phosphate synthase 1. So this carbamyl phosphate synthase 1 it's a rate limiting uh, enzyme so which regulates the urea synthesis so uh, in second step uh, this carbamyl phosphate it react it condenses with the ornithin to form a citrulline and the reaction is catalyzed by the ornithin transcarbamylase so carbamyl group is transferred to the amino group of ornithin by ornithin transcarbamylase to form a citrulline and after formation of the citrulline it is excluded to the it enters to the cytosol. So entry of ornithin into the mitochondria and exit of citrulline from the mitochondria involve the mitochondrial intermembrane transport system. So, so there is the uh, antiport protein is available in the mitochondrial intermembrane. So which exit the citrulline from mitochondria to the cytosol in entry of ornithin from cytosol to the mitochondria. So now uh, formation of uh, this arginine uh, succinate and for this it require a ATP and uh, here the urido part so urido group of citrulline that is that is involved in the uh, reactions. So in the first step that that is urido, urido group of the citrulline it is it forms a it's react with the ATP to form a intermediate AMP, citrullinyl AMP, and then this AMP is replaced by aspartate. This aspartate to form a arginine succinate. So here, yeah, one molecule of aspartate is added to citrulline, forming a carbon to nitrogen bond, which provides a second nitrogen atom of urea. And this reaction is catalyzed by the arginine succinate synthesis. So it is a magnetic dependent enzyme and the reactions require ATP. So it is energetically expensive process. So and here the two steps are occur. So in the first, this urido group. So here, which we have seen this uh, group, 
with ammonia carbenzone. Here, this uridyl groups it first react with the ATP to form a intermediate compound, citrulline AMP complex, and then this AMP AMP is replaced by the aspart aspartic acid to form a arginine succinate. And here, and you you can see here the one molecule of ATP is consumed, but uh, during that the ATP hydrolysis, it forms this AMP and PPI. And then the after the degradation of this pyrophase phosphate when it uh, releases the two after dialysis of this pyrophosphate to the two molecule of inorganic phosphate. So here this ATP is degraded to AMP and PPI. So that means the energy which is consumed here or that is equivalent to the two molecule of ATP. Though it uses the single ATP here, it the energy which is released is equivalent to the two molecule of ATP. So uh, in the uh, so uh, for the completions of the Zeta cycle, it required four molecules of ATP, two molecules of ATP during a synthesis of carbamyl phosphate and two molecules of ATP during a synthesis of arginosuccinate from a citrulline. So formation of uh, arginine. So arginosuccinate is cleaved by the enzyme arginosuccinate lies to the arginine and fumarate. And this formed fumarate, it linked the TCA cycle and which we will uh, discuss on later slide. So the addition of part of fumarate form of malate, subsequent, subsequent energy dependent oxidation of malate form of oxaloacid and transamination of oxaloacid by the glutamate amide transfer then reform the aspartate. So that we will uh, discuss on a later slide. So arginosuccinate, so the enzyme help degrade the lyse of the arginosuccinic acid to the arginine and fumarate. So now formation of urea. So the enzyme in urea arginase, enzyme arginase, it cleave arginine into the urea and ornithine. So hence ornithine is regenerated at the end of the reactions and hence the cycle complete and it's called as a urea cycle. So apart from uh, this arginine as a precursor of the urea, this arginine is also involved in the synthesis of nitric oxide so which is the vasodilator and uh, this is the one of the reason that arginine in case of the uh, this infants it is the <coughs> not essential amino acid but in case of the adult this arginine is the non-essential amino acid since this arginine can be synthesized via the urea cycle so again this over overview of uh, this uh, recall of this uh, urea cycle reactions. So on the first, this ammonia reacts with uh, bicarbonate to form a carbamyl phosphate and, and which is catalyzed by the enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthase 1, synthase 1. And for this reactions, it requires uh, two molecules of ATP. So once carbamyl phosphate is formed, then it is, it condenses with the ornithine to form a citrulline and the reaction is catalyzed by the ornithine transcarbamylase and in form cytrulline, so it exists to the cytosol where the subsequent reactions takes place. So this first and second reactions that takes place in the mitochondria and the remaining steps that takes place in the cytosol. So on cytosol, cytrulline with the help of the enzyme arginosuccinate synthetase, so it condensed with the aspartate to form a arginosuccinate and this arginosuccinate is lies it's cleaved to the arginine and fumarate and finally this arginine is hydrolyzed by the enzyme arginase to synthesize the urea and here regain of ornithine is takes place and hence the cycle complete so energetic of uh, urea cycle so aspartate plus ammonia plus carbon dioxide so plus Three molecules of ATP plus three molecules of hydrogen water. Water it held one molecule of urea, one molecule of fumarate, and two molecules of uh, ADP, one molecule of AMP, one molecule of pyrophosphate. So all the three ATP are used in the reactions. Actually, four ATP are required. So two ATP in the first reactions and two ATP in the 
reactions that convert central into the arginine substrate. So, on that one ATP molecules that converts to AMP and PPI. So, generations of the ATP from the AMP, it generally utilizes two molecules of ATP molecules. So, in total, four ATP are required for the completion of the urea cycle. So, since uh, this fumarate, fumarate can be converted to malate and then to oxaloacetate, 2.5 ATP may be generated from NADH. So, thus, the net ATP required for urea synthesis is 1.5. So regulations of urea cycle. So urea cycle can be regulated in the uh, two forms. So one is long term control, and next one is a short term control. So long term control of the urea cycle it is depend upon the enzymes and the increase senses of the urea cycle enzymes by the starvation and the high protein diet. So during starvation, there is access. Uh, uh, the body utilizes the uh, this stored protein so that means the muscle proteins as a source of energy and so there is the high uh, catabolisms of muscles takes place and this uh, high muscle degradation so that lead to the increased synthesis of urea so on uh, this urea cycle is also depend upon the high protein diet so when the persons consume more amounts of the proteins so then more amounts of protein consumes that is the more amounts of protein degradation so that lead to the increased urea cycle and next is the short term control so short term control that the urea cycle is stimulated so the rate limiting enzyme of the urea cycle is caramel phosphate synthetase 1 and this caramel phosphate synthetase 1 is activated by the n acetyl glutamate so this n acetyl glutamate is the uh, regulatory element for the caramel phosphate synthase one so it is the activator for caramel phosphate synthase one so it activates whole urea cycle and it increases synthesis of n acetyl glutamate is by high protein diet and the high concentrations of arginine so significance of uh, urea cycle so main significance of this main purpose of the urea cycle is that is the detoxification of the ammonia so this which is liberated during the amino acid catabolism so this uh, by means of this urea cycle this toxic ammonia so it is generated during the degradation of amino acid is converted to the non toxic compound called as a urea and thus form urea that is excreted via the kidney and this Urea cycle is also necessary in the adult for the synthesis of arginine amino acids. So, this arginine is the amino acid which can be synthesized in the liver by this urea cycle. So, and next, this, it is also necessary for the synthesis of the precursor ornithine, so which is the precursor for the uh, proline, anhydrine uh, amino acid, and the polyamines. So relations of uh, urea cycle and TCA cycle. So you have uh, seen that this fumarate is released during the activity of arginosubstrate lyse and thus form fumarate that is entered to the mitochondria. And on that mitochondria, this fumarate is converted to the malic with the help of the uh, enzyme fumarate. And this, uh, with the help of this, this uh, does form malic that is converted to oxaloacetate with the help of the enzyme mal this uh, malic dehydrogenase and this oxaloacetate it is converted to the aspartate with the help of the enzyme transaminase and thus from aspartate it exit from mitochondria to the cytosol where on cytosol uh, on cytosol this aspartate it condenses with the citrulline to form a arginine succinate so this is the link of urea cycle with the TCA cycle. So during urea cycle, it's require a aspartate for the generation of this arginine succinate, and thus utilize aspartate. It can be regained, regenerated by the another substrate, which is released during the lysis of arginine succinate to arginine and fumarate. And this fumarate can be utilized for the regenerating of the aspartate, and during the regeneration of aspartate from a fumarate, it utilizes the this TCA cycle in the mitochondria. So, in this, it's this, the fumarate compound, it provides a link between urea cycle and citric acid cycle.
So this is the uh, same uh, this, uh, structure. So the fumarate, it can directly enter to the uh, mitochondria where it converts to malate oxalate and then with the, the transaminations reactions, it can get the aspartate or uh, in cytosol itself, this fumarate can be converted to the malate. That means this fumarate enzymes, it is also present in the cytosol and uh, by means of malate also, it can enter to the mitochondria or this malate dehydrogenase oh. enzyme, which is also present in the cytosol, which converts malate to the oxaloacetate. And this oxaloacetate, it enters to the mitochondria and on mitochondria, this oxaloacetate converted into the aspartate with the help of the transaminase enzyme, which is present in the mitochondria and uh, this aspartate, it can uh, ex exit from mitochondria to the cytosol and it can involve in the urea cycle. So it means the fumarate can utilized for the regenerate of the aspartic. So urea cycle uh, disorders. So urea synthesis uh, converts this uh, toxic ammonia to non-toxic urea. All defects in uh, urea synthesis result in ammonia intoxications. So inherited disorder of uh, this is the urea cycle enzymes are family hyperammonemia and acute fulminating hepatitis, cirrhosis of uh, liver, severe renal disease. That is the acquired hyperammonemia. So defect in the enzymes. So deficiency of the enzymes of urea cycles that lead to the inherited that the familial hyperammonemia and defect on the hepatitis. So on the liver that lead to the acquired hyperammonemia. So ammonia toxicity. So defects on uh, this uh, urea cycle. So that lead to the increased concept of ammonia toxicity so that means so uh, when there is a defects on the urea cycle it lead to the increased ammonia concentration and since this ammonia is if the am um, uh, concentrations of ammonia is increased in the body so it lead to the toxicity so especially to the uh, this nervous tissues and the impairment of nervous tissue by this ammonia is mm, the mechanism for that is not well understood, but the possible mechanism. So why this ammonia caused the toxic? Why this ammonia is toxic to the central nervous system? So it may be the due to the, so one possible is that is a decreased glucose utilizations and ATP generations. So when there is a high concentrations of ammonia is present in the uh, brain, then the, uh, the precursors, this alpha ketoglutarate so the alpha ketoglutarate is not only the acceptor for the it is a, for the amino groups during a transaminations it is also a intermediate of tca cycle since alpha ketoglutarate is the intermediate of the tca cycle and so that what happened it can involved in the generations of the ATP. So when there is the access of ammonia, then what happened is alpha ketoglutarate. It is converted to the glutamate. So with the activity of glutamate, glutamate dehydrogenase enzymes. So we have already uh, studied uh, this one, this glutamate dehydrogenase enzymes. So which catalyze, which catalyze uh, glutamate into the alpha ketoglutarate and the ammonia. It is the reversible reactions. And the, the reactions forward is depend upon the availability of the concentrations of substrate. So if there is the high concentrations of the uh, glutamate, then it converted glutamate into the alpha ketoglutarate and ammonia. If there is a high concentrations of ammonia, then what happened? It converts alpha ketoglutarate to the glutamate. So then what happened is alpha ketoglutarate is not available for the TCA cycle. So when the TCA cycle is not properly occurred, then there is the lack of ATP. So next one is the, that is the glutamate depletions. So this uh, glutamate is, this glutamate is uh, also, it is also a neurotransmitter. And apart from that, this glutamate is also utilized for the synthesis of the another uh, neurotransmitter called as the GABA. So when there is the access, uh, this ammonia, then the generated glutamate that can be converted to the glutamine with the help of the enzyme glutamine synthesis. So, when there is a uh, the depletions of this glutamate, then neurotransmitters will be altered, and so that the functions of nervous tissue may be altered. 
and next one is so during the high concentrations of this ammonia it increases the permeability of chlorides so which disturb on the nerve impulse generation so which lead to the neuronal dysfunctions and next is that is the uh, due to the uh, this uh, liberations of this increasing of this ammonia it also causes the accumulations of excitotoxins like this serotonin and aspartate in the brain so increase amounts of aspartate that is ammonia it increases the permeability of the aspartate or this uh, this uh, tryptophan to the brain and in turn this tryptophan it is converted to the serotonin in the uh, brain so sign and symptoms so the ammonia toxicity for of this sign and symptoms it leads to sinus dysfunctions or manifestations of the failure of liver functions like this ascites jaundice hepatomegaly edema hemorrhoids so major function this uh, sign and symptoms of ammonia toxicity is that is the cns dysfunctions encephaly apart from that there is also about megaly edema and hemorrhage of the urea cycle enzyme so so when there is the defect on the enzyme unavailability to synthesize enzymes tyramyl phosphate synthesis one it lead to the uh, disorder called hyperammonemia type 1 and on the deficiency of the enzymes ornithine transcarbamylase it lead to uh, disorder hyperammonemia type 2 so when there is a defects or when the deficiency of the enzyme arginine succinate enzyme then it lead to the disorder called as a citrullinemia and when there is the defects or deficiency of the enzyme arginine succinate lyase it lead to the disorder called as a arginine succinic acid urea and when there is a deficiency of the enzyme arginase it lead to the disorder called argininemia among these uh, five disorder this ornithin transcarbamylase deficiency so this type uh, this this one is the x linked disorder and of the four these are the autosomic uh, this autosomal recessive disorder so this first third four and fifth this uh, this four disorders are the autosomal recessive disorder and this hyperammonemia type 2 so that is the x linked disorder and on that this first and two so the defects on this uh, this hyperammonemia type 1 and the hyperammonemia type 2 it lead to the ammonia toxicity and the this rest of the defects that also lead to the ammonia toxicity but the severity is the less compared to the this type 1 and the type 2 since uh, after and from the defects of the type 3 so there there is uh, this third disorders that there is the products this citrullin arginosuccinate and arginine are released so the toxicity this ammonia is converted to this compound so the toxicity of ammonia is less comparing to the this hyperammonemia that one in type 2 so another uh, defects this auto this inherited disorder that is the anacetyl glutamate synthase deficiency so it is the it is also autosomal recessive disorder so on this a severe neonatal disorder with a fatal consequence and the persons and the if the the person is unable to and treat for this and so it is order but i been ornithine is acoplasm so ornithine is not able to enter the mitochondria so it lead to the hyper ornithinemia and since ornithine is not available in the mitochondria then ammonia cannot be converted to the Uh, there is a citrullin so there is the hypothalamic uh, presence and here homo citrullin urea so the concentration of citrullin will be decreased since uh, this ornithin and ammonia is not difficult to speak neurological uh, deficits so mental retardation and finally coma and death so diagnosis so generally this uh, diagnosis for this ammonia can be done Uh, by the estimating the concentrations of ammonia in blood and urine and there is a also increased glutamine in cerebrospinal fluid and also it is increased excretions in the urine and 
uh, another is that is the degrees blood urea level and next is that is the urea cycle intermediates accumulates in blood and it is excreted in urine. So diagnosis for this uh, urea cycle defects are hyper, that is ammonia is that is the increased level of ammonia. So there's a hyper ammonia, ammonia and the ammon, ammonia urea. So that is excretion of ammonia in urine is also high. And next is that is the increased glutamine in CSF and also in a urine. So decreased blood urea levels since the urea synthesis is decreased and the accumulations of urea cycle intermediates in blood as well as in the increase in the excretion in urine. So treatment of this urea cycle defect is that is the instant reduction of plasma ammonia and this instant reduction of plasma ammonia it can be done by the hemodialysis or by the blood transfusion and it can be done by the intravenous administration of this sodium benzoate and phenyl acetate so with the detoxify the ammonia and reducing the protein intolerance. So that means reducing the uh, intake of protein. So normal blood level. So urea concentrations in the blood age. So that is the 15 to 40 milligram per deciliter. And increasing of blood urea level is called as the azotomia. So azotomia. So azotomia is the uh, increase blood, increase urea concentration in the blood. And the causes of azotomia are three causes are there. So the pre-renal cause, renal cause, and post-renal cause. And generally, this pre-renal cause they, they are associated with the reduce in the renal blood flow. So when there is the renal uh, reduce in the renal uh, renal blood flow, then what happens? This urea is not cleared by the kidney so that this urea are retained in a blood itself so which causes the hyperuremia or this uh, azotomia so the causes so the causes for this pre-renal causes for the hyperuremia are this uh, severe and protracted vomiting ulcerative colitis so diabetic coma crisis of addison's uh, disease so hematemesis so severe burns toxic fever so cardiac failure so apart from that uh, this uh, high consumption of uh, this uh, uh, protein diet so that also lead to the increased blood urea so which is the pre renal cause so hyper uh, this protein high protein diet and uh, this increased protein catabolisms so that also lead to the uh, high urea level so which is the pre renal cause so basically these all these uh, these these causes that can be we we can divide into three parts so one is that is the reduced renal blood flow so next one is the uh, this one uh, high protein catabolism which can be seen in case of the fever and infections and next one is the uh, dehydration so remove of the more fluids so which can seen in case of this one so addition disease and this severe that is vomiting so that we can see and this cardiac failures and these all are due to the uh, reduced renal uh, blood flow so which causes the increased urea in the blood so these are the renal cause and next one is the renal cause so when there is the alterations on the filtrations or when there is a defects in the kidney so that that what happens this urea is not filtered clearly and so that it is retained in a blood itself so the conditions for the increased urea we have the renal causes that is the uh, this defect like this acute glomerulonephritis malignant hypertension so chronic pyelonephritis mercurial poisoning so hydronephrosis congenital cystic disease uh, cystic kidneys renal tuberculosis renal failure so here what happened due to the defects in the kidney the uh, there is the low filtrations of the urea so that there is the retention of urea in the blood itself lead to the increased urea concentrations in the blood so next one is the post renal cause 
So here, what happened? The uh, kidney they can easily filtrate, but uh, obstructions on the flow of this urea, which retain the urea in the blood itself, or so increases the these are filtrations of the urea, such as this enlargement of prostate, stones in the urinary tract, the structure of urethra, tumors of the bladder affecting the ureters. These all obstruct the flow of urine or urea. So, which are the post renal causes which increases the urea retention in the blood? Decrease blood urea. So generally, this blood urea with uh, the decreased level of blood urea is seen in case of the severe liver disease. Since uh, this uh, urea is synthesized in the liver, so when the liver uh, disease are there, then this urea cannot be synthesized in the uh, in the liver. So which lead to the decreased concentrations of the urea. And apart from that, it can be seen in case of the protein malnutrition when there is the uh, low consumption of the protein that also lead to the uh, decrease synthesis of the urea and apart from that uh, during pregnancy late pregnancy and the infancy infants also there is uh, there is a decreased blood urea is seen and during pregnancy late pregnancy and uh, this uh, infancy there is the uh, high rate of protein synthesis so there is a reduced protein degradation so which lead to the decreased blood urea so urinary expressions. So urinary expressions of the urea is 25 to 30 gram per day, and the increasing of urea expression is seen in case of the high protein diet, hematemesis, so excess tissue breakdown, as in high fever and severe wasting disease. So there's a high intake of protein also lead to the high degradations of proteins and increased protein catabolism. So both lead to the increased synthesis of the urea and which lead to the increased expressions. And decreased urinary expression is seen in case of the renal failure, so which decreases the filtration of this urea. And also it is seen in case of a severe hepatic insufficiency where the urea synthesis is altered, low protein diet where the substrate is uh, not required and also in a severe acidosis. So where the urinary excretion is decreased. So next, that is the protein turnover. So most proteins in the body are constantly and repetitively synthesized and degraded. And this rate of the synthesis of the protein and rest rate of the degradation of protein is nearly same. So the amounts of this protein turnover is are 250 to 350 gram of the proteins on every day but the protein degradations uh, when we compare to the individual proteins the degradations rate this turnover rate is differ for example in case of the liver enzymes it is from few hour to uh, days and uh, structural proteins like this collagens fibers day, day to several months so protein when they are turnover that's a degraded they are converted to the amino acids so about 80% of the amino acid which is liberated during the protein degradation, they are recycled. So they are recycled, that means they are again reutilized for the synthesis of the proteins and rest of the amino acid, that 20% of amino acids are catabolized. So uh, like this uh, protein turnover, the amino acid pool, so that is also the similar. So the uh, usually this uh, amino acid pool means that is the population of uh, this free amino acid. So that are distributed throughout the body. So that is the, uh, these are free amino acids present in the body. So around it is 100 gram. So that is the amino acid pool. And this amino acid pool is maintained by the two things. One is the source from which the amino acid can be get from the body. So these sources for the amino acids are, these are proteolysis, that is the protein degradations. And next one is that the consumption of the proteins and also the different amino acids, non-essential amino acid, which is synthesized in the body from the uh, their respective keto acids and utilization. So where it is utilized is the one that the amino acids are utilized for the protein synthesis. And next, some of the amino acids, they are utilized for the synthesis of the specific, uh, these special products. 
So like this one, these are thyroid hormones, so this uh, nitric oxide, these all are sensors from the amnesis, so which are the spe special products. And apart from that, when there is the excess amnesis there, then this excess amino acid is degraded. And during the degradations of amino acids, so amino part that is, is utilized for the synthesis of urea, which is after that it is excreted in the via the kidney and the, uh, this carboskeletal part of the amino acid. So that is either it is utilized for the energy source or it can be utilized for the precursors for the synthesis of uh, glucose or fats. So ketoneogenesis, so that is the synthesis of the ketone bodies or gluconeogenesis, that is synthesis for a glucose. So essential and non-essential amino acids. So uh, generally what happened is uh, all the amino acids are necessary for the synthesis of the proteins. However, some amino acids that can be synthesized in our body so that they are not necessary to supply from the diet, so which is called as a non-essential amino acids. And uh, some amino acids which cannot be synthesized in our body since there is a no synthetic pathway in the body so that they are supplied from the other source and which is called as the essential. So in terms of that the amino acids, these are the two types, non-essential and essential. Non-essential amino acids, so these are the amino acids which can be synthesized in our body itself and essential amino acids, so which is not synthesized in our body and so that they are supplied from the another source. And the essential amino acids, you can remember by the formula, uh, this one PVD, team hall. So private team hall, so, which means phenylalanine, valine, tryptophan, threonine, isoleucine, methionine, histidine, arginine, lysine, leucine. So uh, next step, so that is the glucogenic amino acid concept. So on discussions that uh, during the degradations of amino acids, so it held the two part. One is amino part and another one the carboskeletal part. So amino part that is utilized for the synthesis of the urea and this uh, carboskeletal part it catalyzed and it can produce either pyruvate or acetyl uh, or acetyl CoA. So those amino acids, the carboskeletal part of the amino acid which produce acetyl CoA, they are called as the ketogenic amino acid since this acetyl CoA is utilized by the liver for the synthesis of uh, these uh, ketone bodies and uh, those amino acids on degradations which produce pyruvate or TC, intermediates of TCA cycle, they are called as a glucogenic amino acid since this pyruvate, pyruvate is utilized by the body uh, for the synthesis of glucose via the gluconeogenesis. So on that, uh, these two amino acids, lysine and leucine, they are purely ketogenic. So on the catabolisms of leucine and lysine, they can add the ketone bodies. And rest of the 18 uh, these common amino acids, they are the glucogenic. On that also, these five amino acids are the uh, partly ketogenic, partly Glucogenic. That means uh, the degradations, the catabolisms of these uh, five amino acids, they produce both keto acid, uh, acetyl CoA, as well as the glucogenic. So, isoleucine, tryptophan, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and threonine. And rest of the 13 amino acids. So, on degradations of these amino acids, it produces the glucose. So, examples are this one so, valine, histidine, arginine, there's a uh, Aspar aspartzin, so glutamine, so methionine, alanine, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, glycine, proline, serine, and cysteine. So they provide a glucose on their degradation. So which are called as the glucogenic amino acid. So this is all about the urea cycle and the amino acid pool. And these uh, notes are prepared uh, from uh, this reference book. So you can see these books for the reference. So thank you for the class.